Public comment for tonight's meeting will take place both in person and remotely through Zoom. Those in attendance will make public comment at the podium located near the dais. Public comment also continues through Zoom using the raise hand feature. At the time for public comment, raise your hand to be recognized and unmuted. Please state your full name prior to making public comment. Also at this time, please take a moment to silence your cell phone. Thank you. Horizon time showing 6 p.m., so I will call the uh, meeting to order. Welcome to the May 19th, 2021 Committee of the Whole meeting. I'd like to ask public and staff to please mute your devices unless uh, you will be speaking on a particular item. Also, to make public comment, use the raise hand function on the Zoom platform if you are uh, watching us via Zoom tonight or uh, if you are here, please approach the right podium. Public comment tonight will be limited to five minutes. Um, once uh, you come up to the podium, please uh, identify yourself. And uh, just a couple more announcements. Um, it is obviously very, very warm in here this evening. Um, I apologize for that. Uh, our folks are working on it. Um, but it is very uncomfortable and we, we certainly understand that. So with that, I will call on the clerk to read the agenda item, please. Oh, yes. Um, Mary, I believe council, uh, Councilman Cook, uh, Councilwoman Aldridge, and is Councilman, um, Escabel on now. So those three members of the governing body are on Zoom tonight. Kirk, please read the item. Ordinance second reading, appropriating monies for the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming for various purposes in conducting the municipal government of said city and fixing the amount of general and special taxes as part of the revenue required to meet the said appropriation all, of the, all for the fiscal year beginning July 1st of 2021 and ending June 30th of 2022. Mr. Mayor, staff report. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the committee. We uh, have uh, brought before you a balanced budget. Uh, Robin and I presented that to you. And then over the last what week or 10 days, we've had an opportunity to have every department come before you and, uh, and explain their budgets. Um, so we're, we're here now today to uh, hear your input on the budget and to um, um, see what amendments that we might need to, uh, to work through uh, over the next few weeks. Um, <clears throat> I would like to say one thing. Um, I had a busy day today and I didn't get a chance to read my emails until just about five minutes before this meeting. And I got an email from Richard Mincer, who is a part of the uh, Animal Shelter Board of Directors. And I'd like to read that to you if I could. It says, Mayor Collins and Councilman Cook, the Cheyenne Animal Shelter Board had a special meeting last night to discuss the city contract. I thought it was important to let you know what we decided in advance of your committee of the whole meeting this evening. The board voted unanimously to cancel the contract if the city does not agree to the $850,000 proposed amount for the coming year. As I mentioned during our recent presentation, we will start moving in another direction and will work with the city to achieve a smooth 
transition as possible should the city decide to either stand up its own animal control operation and sheltering facility or try to find another contractor. This could be up to a year of services at an agreed price. Also, as I've described over the last three years, even an $850,000 contract amount this year does not equate to the city paying the cost of the services provided by the Shine Animal Shelter. We still have a ways to go and need to start taking much bigger steps to catch up. Feel free if you have any questions, to yours truly, Richard Mincer. So I thought you guys should know that before we, uh, uh, we go. We still have a month for the budget, so we have plenty of time to work through the issue, but I thought you should know of the email as soon as I learned of it. And with that, we're here to, uh, to cooperate in any way we can with the process. Thank you, Mayor. Treasurer Lockman, do you have anything to add? No, I don't, Mr. President. Great. Um, with that, um, I'll, I will ask, uh, open it up for public comment. I would ask that uh, there is a short presentation um, from the, a representative from Art Cheyenne. Uh, they uh, informed us quite some time, or a few days ago, that they would uh, like to make a presentation tonight. Um, so with that, I'll ask uh, Desiree to please approach the podium. Thank you, Mr. President, council members. Good to see everyone this evening. Um, I will be brief, Desiree Brophy here in Cheyenne. Let me get this lined up. Um, so Art Cheyenne is, of course, the nonprofit agency overseeing many arts and arts advocacy entities within our community. Um, Mm -hmm. Th this won't count on your five okay, minutes. Thank okay, thank you. I appreciate that. And just so you know, Desiree, uh, all of the attachments were emailed out to the governing body this morning. Thank you very much. Not sure everybody had a chance to see them yet, but... Uh, okay. No, you're fine. You're fine. Thank you. I appreciate it, Jennifer. Awesome. All right. So just to get dive right back in real quick, we are a nine member board with one executive director. As you can see by the list of board members, we represent a fairly diverse cross section of members throughout the community working in the creative sector and creative economy. Um, we were founded in 2008 and we did hire a three quarter time director in 2012 and have continued with that same contract yearly and annually um, since then. We redid a five, five year long term strategic plan in 2019, which of course last year kind of put a wrench in. So we are going to be updating and refining that plan this fall to assist us with that. We have received a uh, grant workshop through the Wyoming Arts Alliance to help in those planning efforts. We focus on uh, arts advocacy and programming and of course public art oversight here within our community. Our mission is to lead advocacy for the arts, arts education and culture in our community and to provide community programming that elevates cultural experiences in Laramie County. For our arts advocacy and engagement, we approach this through a variety of ways. We enjoy several entity partnerships, like you do as well, within our community. Uh, we provide strategic assistance to artists and cultural organizations, and we of course advocate for consistent, stable cultural support within Cheyenne. Uh, many of you are familiar with some of our past programs and how we have managed to pivot those as things have changed and adjusted through our community. Fridays in the Asher is probably one of the most popular, but of course the monthly art walk is in, in that list as well. We took over oversight of public art through a resolution and MOU passed in early 2019 with between the Art Cheyenne and the City Council. At that time, about 11,000 was transferred into existing funds and an additional 40,000 was added in an appropriation. We spent the last year through COVID doing a lot of foundational work, researching other regional and local communities to understand what the best practices were to oversee this program. Uh, we've also spent a lot of time studying multiple management and funding options in order to make the best use of funds and to create a better funding environment moving forward. Uh, there are several pieces that require maintenance within the community, one of which is the airport uh, relocation project, and that will actually be taking place this Friday. We've had uh, many discussions with our community partners, such as Leeds, DDA, Visit Cheyenne, et cetera. And this summer, we'll, we will be engaging in multiple activities throughout uh, events that take place around the community. We also had a partnership with the Boys and Girls Club to help collaborate and determine how many works we actually have within the community. To date, on our up-to-date website, which was a part of the funds that we utilized from the previous uh, MOU, 
we have entered 89 works cataloged. A lot of those that are left remaining are those that exist in indoor places. Most recently, the Boys and Girls Club spent time in the governor, or excuse me, in the Capitol cataloging those pieces. Uh, ultimately, our goal with public art and the management of it is to create a robust program that is well managed and well oversaw. This year, we are working on a couple of exciting initiatives, the Mobile Art Gallery. We received CAD designs for this actually just last week. It will go into production this next week, and we expect to see it arrive in our hands in early June. We hope to have final assembly complete throughout the month of June, and at very latest, we'll be launching it for our August event on August 21st, which is the Cheyenne Arts Celebration. Many of, er of you are familiar with the past Cheyenne Arts Festival. This is a new updated iteration of that featuring live music, vendors, food trucks, and a general celebration of the arts in our community. As we move forward, we are focusing on fund diversification and helping to develop multiple funding streams to continue to be a resourceful organization that can support itself and continue to bring in uh, new volunteers and staff as we need. We uh, utilized some previous received uh, federal funds for uh, loss of revenue last year, as well as uh, working towards our current public art projects that I just mentioned, and as we look towards restricted needs for anything that we have in the future, such as other operational or other issues that may arise with any nonprofit in this current environment. Finally, one thing I would be remiss to not mention is the creative economy. Uh, in your email, you received several handouts, and I apologize for the abundance of, of information, but there is quite a lot available as to what our local economy looks like. So there is quite a bit out there. We want to dig even deeper into what that storytelling, storytelling and messaging looks like. Uh, we're very all very familiar with the Alexis Drakes and some of those others that we enjoy downtown. How did they get started? What does that story look like? And how do they fit into that fabric of creative economy? How do we continue messaging and marketing? that in the future and using it as a strength for our community. Um, I will not show this tonight because it is a lengthy video, but you also all received in your email a recent video that just went live on our Cheyenne social, so everyone uh, listening can check this out there. Um, this is several interviews that we did with community members in support of creative economy and arts in Cheyenne. Thank you so much for your time this evening. I very much appreciate it. We understand the nature of this current funding climate, what things look like. We just hope for a, a continued partnership and support in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Des. Are there any questions or comments to uh, Desiree while she's here? And just so everyone knows, uh, there, uh, as the mayor indicated, uh, we do have a month uh, that we will be working on the budget and there will be also be a second Committee of the Whole meeting uh, scheduled for June 9th at 6 p.m. as well. Any questions or comments for Des? Dr. Rennie. Uh, through you to Desiree, uh, the current ask, it lo looks like last year you um, got an appropriation of $50,000. Is that what the ask is for this year? Correct, through you, Councilman. And in that $50,000, 40% was spent on management. Can you detail what that involves? I will, to the best of my knowledge. Now, I will uh, throw out that I am a volunteer board member. So most of that mentioned in laying foundational work. Approaching this program is nothing we wanted to do willy-nilly. We wanted to make sure that it was done successfully and well. So that research, that time and engagement, and the hours devoted to creating a new website were the majority of that time. Okay. Is there any possibility we could have a breakdown of that at some point? Yes, absolutely. I'd be happy to send that along. Thank you. Thank yep. you, Mr. President. Thank you, Dr. Rainey. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none. Uh, Thank oh. uh, sorry. Oh, I didn't I wanted to make sure Pete didn't have anything first before I spoke. So okay. sorry about Mr. that. That's okay, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> All right. So um, going off of um, just so you're on it on your memorandum of understanding, so mm -hmm. you're on the right papers. Mm -hmm. So Sorry, I keep getting told that nobody can hear me through this thing, so I'll do my best to speak louder. Um, so on your for your $50,300, the Cheyenne's Arts Celebration, does. do you have the accounting to see how much is left in the Fridays in the Asher because the 2020 season was canceled? I know we paid for Neff the Pharaoh because that was under contract, and then I believe there was another one that was under contract. Is there any funding that's still left on from Lights On and the Fridays in the Asher that was going to be used to offset that instead of um, having city funds due for that 2500 
We do, and rather than quote an amount I can make up, I can provide that after this. Um, I have an idea in my brain as to what it is, but I don't want to give you the wrong amount. So yes, there is funding left over that we intend to use for the arts celebration and for any Arts Cheyenne Presents programming that moves forward. So that would take part of part two for the other 2,500. So yeah, if you can get me the numbers on what's left over on the Fridays in the Asher account since the Asher's no longer holding concerts and um, just to know if that could be offset by those funds. Um, in regards to the public art maintenance for $10,000, um, the thing that you had on your presentation was it talked about the airport sculptures and the city treasurer forwarded us an invoice um, that went to Art Cheyenne for around 3,000 some odd dollars and that had included the uh, kinetic art exhibit but it also had the airport sculptures and then during one of our meetings it was stated that um, that, that was actually going to be handled by airport staff and so I guess if that's going to be handled by their staff, are, is Art Cheyenne paying them out of that $3,000 that was already appropriated, that was already on that line for that specific invoice? Or did you get a cost estimate from the airport of what that's gonna be, or are they just handling it all on their own? It was largely determined that they would handle it on their own. So the funds are available if there is a need for those costs, if they do need to offset anything, and we can certainly handle that that way. But for the most part, that conversation with Tim is that he really wanted to take care of that on his own. Okay. so. Stand by. So for the treasurer, I guess on that one, because that was the way that the invoice was laid out, do we need to redraft an invoice that actually shows specifically what those funds were going? Because the invoice did state that this was going to relocation of the airport sculptures. Uh, Mr. President, through you to Councilman Johnson, it might not be a bad idea for Arch Cheyenne to provide some kind of um, something that retroactively I can attach to the system so we know that those funds were not used for that purpose. Okay, so I guess that's, so besides the airport, sorry, Desiree, back to you, um, with the public arts maintenance and the public art installation um, for $25,000, besides the airport um, sculptures, what was it that we were looking for for $25,000? What were we looking to install? That was largely left open-ended, and that was something that we hoped to accomplish in 2020, barring any issues. So we had a kinetic art park on the line, and it is, is still part of our planning. That's something that we want to revisit. I actually had a meeting with the DDA today about a couple projects we'll be taking part in this summer. So we will be allocating funds towards physical public art projects. They just simply weren't able to be realized in 2020. Okay, so I guess on that one, would it be better to come, I mean, once you guys actually have something set in stone, I know that goes along with maintenance and installation, but um, once we have something set in stone, wouldn't that be better to do through an a reappropriation so we can actually see where we're at on our funding levels before we actually make a determination to put this into our actual budget? Because I, I think that would be better handled that way because I'd rather have a solid project than just um, leave it just sitting out there, for, especially for $25,000. Um, the next one, it's a little odd because it says arts and public places asset inventory software. That was my big concern when I first started bringing this up about a month and a half ago is that um, a lot of it, when we, I asked for the itemized list that this came back to is, you know, for administrative costs and website development that we had um, out of the um, money, because really it was $40,000 that was allocated um, in 2019. I know there was the additional funds that came out of the arts and public places account but for $17,325 out of $40,000, that looked like 48% uh, went to administrative costs. And so in 2020, you know, or 2019, 2020, I couldn't figure out exactly why $17,325 went to basically um, website development and Zoom meetings. So, and I was just wondering if the city was being billed, just like say you're on a call for Art Cheyenne, but you're also on calls for like, the Wyoming Public Arts or you know any of these other agencies like you talked about in your presentation through other agencies that the instant that Cheyenne came up you know just in the inventory did did was that being what was billed for that because that seems still like just such an excessive cost and that's why I'm so apprehensive to approve fifty thousand dollars more to sit into account when 48 percent nearly look like it went to admin fees what I would like to do is provide that breakdown to you with the other breakdown if I may if that is all right are you Through okay with that, Jeff? The count, uh, President White, sorry. Yes. Great. We and you'll, do so. you'll provide that when? Uh, we can do so by the end of this week. Okay. At the very latest. Great. Okay. And then I guess 
there's obviously been a lot of movement within the last month and a half because I got told that I didn't know where I pulled the date from in regards to the art mobile. So now, because what I was originally told in January, and this is where I'm kind of looking at. So was, forgive me if my timeline's incorrect. So when the $40,000 was given by the city in 2019, that was actually looked at as um, uh, funds that were not available in 2020 due to COVID. And so it was Art Cheyenne did put in a request under the nonprofit world under the CARES Act. And so wasn't that offset for the $40,000 from 2019? And then those funds of the $40,000 were supposed to go towards the art mobile. Wasn't that the decision that was made in January? Correct. The funds for the art mobile did come out of our CARES Act funding that we received. Okay. So what did the overall cost like? So if you got, if you're still sitting on, um, you know, roughly $23,000 um, out of your 40,000 in 2019 and your $40,000 um, from that you got from the CARES Act, um, how much did your actual vehicle cost? Um, was this going to be in excess of that? No, it will not. So I believe the CAD drawings and that particular piece of the project will be about 13,000. Well, we're leaving the remaining out of that 25 to go towards final uh, fabrication and any other niceties that we want within the, uh, the material. And then from there, um, marketing, messaging, and launching. So we fully expect to be within our $25,000 budget on that project. Okay, so I guess my last question um, is, um, would Art Cheyenne be opposed to actually solving a lot of these issues through um, appropriations throughout the year as plans become more solid instead of actually having it put into the um, overall 2022 federal or fiscal year budget? Not at all. We'd be happy to have those conversations. Okay, that's all I had. Thank you, President White. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Great questions, and thank you, Desiree. Any you other time. questions for, excuse me, any other questions for Desiree while she's here? Thank you for your time. Thank you. With that, I will open it up for other public comment. Yes, sir. Please uh, approach the podium. Mr. President, your honor, the mayor and fellow council members. My name's Terry Harbick. I'm the commander of the post six American Legion honor guard. Uh, we are here to honor veterans, our primary goal. Our second goal is to promote 100% Americanism along with the uh, American Legion and all the other service organizations in town. As of the beginning of the year, we used to receive our funding through the Wyoming State Veterans Commission. We would be reimbursed when we showed up, which was every time they asked us, uh, $100 per funeral. We currently have 34 members of the Honor Guard uh, 15 are active, really active. To date this year, we have, well, today we did 54, our 54th uh, service honoring members. It's really increased this year with the new National Cemetery. Uh, our funding is getting ready. It's already been cut in half as of the beginning of the fiscal year, January 2000. 21 and uh, it's going to be going down to nothing we are working on plans to uh, fill in that funding and uh, we've been invited here and told that uh, you you might be able to fill in a portion of that funding and uh, we have no overhead administrative cost on the honor guard. Uh, all our funding, Mr. President and Mayor, goes towards uniforms and uh, occasionally, like coming up on the 28th, we have multiple, multiple funerals on the uh, docket already on that date out at the National Cemetery for to honor military veterans. We also participate 
in local functions as long as they're not affiliated with any political party. Uh, we will present colors, march and parades. Uh, this is all done by our members at no expense, but it does cost things for uniforms. And unfortunately, some of our members are older and bigger than they were. And uh, we have to uh, special order, you know, overcoats, winter clothing, and it does cost money. So uh, anything you could do to provide an interim support to us, uh, we're not lock looking for long-term support, would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harbeck, and I believe uh, Councilman Escabel is planning to uh, offer an amendment to um, to provide some funding for you when we get to that point tonight. Um, with, are there any comments or questions to Mr. Harbeck? Yes, sir. Mr. Johnson. Uh, through you. Um, so I guess I'm looking, I, I'm guessing it's the sheet that says from Ken. Okay, so everything on the, because it, sorry about that. So per my sheet, it says this is from the Wyoming Military Department. It says it's a unit supplemental budget narrative. It looks like it's on, I don't know if the 21, because it has 2021, 2022 biennium, but I guess this is maybe page number 21. But everything on this sheet deals with Lovell and Powell and mentions of the Lao Army. Were we supposed to receive something different that actually reflected on Cheyenne, or is this, are we supporting something that's taking place in northern Wyoming? Jennifer, thank you for emailing me today. Uh, she emailed me pages 43 through 46, I believe, deal with the reimbursements of the honor guards throughout the states. I mean, uh, in Cheyenne, it's American Legion Post 6, and Pine Bluffs, it's Post 6 uh, throughout the state. The, uh, eventually this is going to have to happen throughout the United States. Uh, there are combined honor guards between the various service organizations, veterans of Minister or the veterans of foreign wars, the VA or the American Legion, the disabled American veterans, the AMVETs, uh, pro provide these services for military honors throughout the states. I'm not sure how many they do throughout the states. We've been averaging in the last five years in 90 some funerals a year. But as I said today, we have uh, 50, 54 to date and we have about another eight on the docket for this month, next month, the furthest one out is July 18th, and that's a, a family service that's been requested up in Vita Vu. Yeah. Mr. Johnson. I guess, because um, we just got an email, and it looks like the attachment still includes the same pages of 21 and 22, so I guess um, I'll kind of not put you on the spot because you don't probably know what was sent to us. So. Um, if an um, amendment actually comes forward, I may have more questions from the sponsor that you may not be able to answer. So I think that would be off-putting to ask more specific questions on my literature that I got that you may not have the answers for. So I'm sorry to take your time. Uh, not a problem, Mr. Johnson. Jennifer, Jennifer sent me the uh, uh, pages about, about Lovell to begin with and how they're going to be disfunded. And then I asked her about the uh, pages she sent me, that which was 43 through 46, and uh, that that deals with the fact that they're cutting our the state funds in half right. coming up through July, and from there they are it's reduced. The remaining pot will be split amongst the other honor guards in the state, and. Once that funding is expired, then it's going to be up to us to raise the funds. Uh, a funeral like today, we had 10 members there. Uh, I, I figure we, uh, you know, 
our hourly wage for what we got for that hundred dollars was like a hundred dollars when you get a individual out of bed get them dressed get them get them to the service and perform the service and it's always nice like today sat there while about 20 people got up and made the you know speeches that as far as I I'm concerned could have been made in the uh, you know he hereafter but we we get to sit out there and wait and then then we do our military honors so thank you uh, mayor mr president Terry, could you just answer the question I think they asked is, are you asking us to fund funerals that are just for Cheyenne, or are you asking us to fund funerals that you do in other parts of the state? In the past, we have uh, traveled a lot of parts of the state. We've traveled hundreds of miles. But right now, we basically do Cheyenne, and the National Cemetery is still an unknown. It is giving us a, a good portion of our uh, ceremonies to date. I couldn't tell you the exact number, Mayor Collins, but uh, it's probably given us about uh, least half of them to date. Now, these are not necessarily Cheyenne veterans. The catchment area for the National Cemetery is like 160 miles radius so they could be Colorado veterans that's could be Nebraska veterans uh, other Wyoming veterans I know we've had a couple from Laramie that we don't know but if you would like that breakdown we could probably figure it out for you mr. president Mayor. It sounds like those, those funerals are held, though, here in Cheyenne, and I think that was the question that I asked, so thank you yep. very much. Thank and you. I understand there's a question from Dr. Aldridge. Thank you, uh, President White. Uh, through you to Mr. Harbick, first and foremost, I want to thank you for your service and for that of your colleagues. I think that we all recognize that uh, freedom isn't free, and we appreciate your service, so thank you so much for that. Um, I, my question is, in Cheyenne, you mentioned that in some areas, um, due to diminishing numbers and um, the aging of um, the honor guards, that the different branches are being combined. And I'm just curious as to whether in Cheyenne, we have a combined branch uh, honor guard, or if we still have individual honor guards uh, representing each branch. Dr. Aldrich, we have members from every branch of service except the Merchant Marines in our Honor Guard at the moment. Excuse me, we just lost our uh, Coast Guard representative, uh, Wayne Johnson, last year. So we have no Coast Guard. But on our Coast Guard, it doesn't matter what service, we are the only, uh, unless the individual is retired officer or long time retired enlisted man, which he may request military honors by the military and they may or may not supply them. If they do not supply them, we perform the military honors regardless of branch of service. Thank you so much. And we're sorry for your loss of your colleague. Thank you. Other questions from the governing body? Mr. Chair. Mr. Roybal. Just a, a clarification, what, what amount are we asking for? Uh, they are talking about $6,000 for one year. Uh, we would generally get $12,000 as of July, as I previously stated. Uh, the, the pot is going to be limited. It is going to dwindle fast. They've already cut us in half for the first part of the year, uh, realizing the fiscal year and financial years don't necessarily coordinate real well. But uh, $6,000, we are already and and have been looking at uh, 
methods to uh, fund ourselves, but when you're talking about a bunch of uh, old veterans, males and females, and what they can do with all their other obligations, it does get limited in what we can do. Fortunately, uh, we had a uh, auxiliary member Unfortunately, she's moving back to Virginia so her brother can help take care of her, but her husband was a retired uh, National Guard person and he was a collector and they donated a lot of stuff. So after we perform a military uh, service tomorrow, uh, we formed a committee to look at this stuff to see whether we're going to put it in a raffle or uh, maybe get together with a thankful Thursday or whatever to, uh, you know, raise some funds for the Honor Guard to provide our physical needs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roybal. Other questions from the governing body? Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity to address you, Mr. President and Mayor. And thank, thank you. you for being here. Other pub, oh, yes. If it's okay, could I leave tonight? <laughs> tonight, unfortunately, is post everlasting at uh, post six, which is to honor our deceased uh, members, both legionnaires, the auxiliary members, and the uh, sons of the legion. And if I could go I, ahead and leave, I would be happy to get there. We would love for you to stay and get heat stroke like the rest of us, but uh, absolutely, sir, you can leave at any time. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Other public comment? Other public comment? Is there any is there any public comment on Zoom? Doesn't look like any. Hear, hearing no public comment, I would call uh, for a motion. Move to approve. It's been moved and seconded. There's just no way to win. So, but the the air conditioning is on now, so that is good news. So it's been it's been moved and seconded. I think it was Mr. J uh, Mr. Seagrave. Sure thing. Comments from the committee. Oh, uh, one thing. Uh, in the past, um, we have the committee of the whole during budget time has gone page by page. Uh, through the budget again. Um, I did have conversations with a couple of colleagues as well as the mayor, and um, it seems to me that we have uh, already gone through the budget page by page at all of the work sessions that uh, we participated in over the last two weeks. So I will throw it out to uh, my colleagues on the governing body if no, anyone has objections to uh, just moving forward and uh, entering into discussion about amendments, um, we can do that. Or if uh, one of you would like, we can uh, revert back to what we've done the past several years and uh, go through page by page again. I will uh, certainly leave it up to your approval. Mr. President. M Mr. Seagrave. I speak in favor of accepting the budget and moving to amendments. As do I. It's been moved and seconded. And so um, are there any objections to? Oh, it's not a motion. I apologize. Is there any objections to that? If, there, if there's a member of the governing body that would uh, like to go page by page, we, we will do that. Otherwise, we will enter into discussion um, on amendments. OK. Thank you. So with that, 
Are there any amendments to be offered? Mr. President. Mr. Seagrave. I actually have three amendments. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about them all at once or individually. Yes, we'll, <clears throat> we'll need to do them individually. All right. I have two um, that I'm proposing come out of the, um, well, first of all, let me thank Mr. Fountain. Uh, he did an excellent job on the insurance uh, this year and saved approximately $276,000. So my first two uh, would come out of that savings from that fund. The first is for an additional um, attorney, and my specific uh, language is an increase in the attorney's office account of $123,220 and a decrease in the miscellaneous division of the same amount. Basically what we would be doing is adding an, a, a staff attorney uh, the costs associated with that for salary, benefits, equipment, uh, licensing, all the normal things that go on in the attorney's office. Uh, I believe during our discussions, uh, both formally and informally, uh, many of us felt that this department needed uh, additional help. So that would be my first amendment. Can I have clarification first? Dr. Aldrich, I would second. It's, hold on, Mr. Johnson. It's been moved and seconded for an increase in the attorney's office account of $123,220 and a decrease in the miscellaneous division of the same amount. Is there a public comment? Mary? Hearing none. Um, comments from the governing body? Uh, my concern is if I have to declare conflict or not. When you say insurance, I have to make sure that you're actually following. Since he brought up the compliance director, I'm guessing that these were warm claims and not health insurance claims because I wanted to get clarification if I declare a conflict. I believe that is correct, Treasurer Lockman. Uh, yes, Mr. President, that is correct. And it's um, it's $196,000 for the general fund. Okay. But it is, it is coming <laughs> out of warm. Yes. Okay. And then uh, I guess... Do I still have the floor? I know that was. Go ahead, yeah. Mr. Johnson. So, um, so it's still in May. So as long as I guess we don't have, because I, I know in the past I was told as long as a garbage truck doesn't catch on fire or something like that, that we have a claim between now and June 30th. Does that, so if we do have a claim that comes in between now and that point, does that make this amendment we still have to obviously fund it if we approve the budget, regardless of what happens within the next month and a half. Is that correct? Um, Mr. President, through you, uh, Mr. Johnson, it is just for the premium for next year. It's it, So the claims are different. So we do have deductibles that we do have to pay that each individual department pays on their own. Okay. I just want to make sure that what, if there wasn't any emergency that happened within the next, you know, 40 days that all of a sudden this became obsolete, we were scrambling to find funds for a position. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. I believe there is a com uh, comment or question from Councilman Cook, and I know he has to leave pretty soon, so we'll go to him first. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, just, and I'll try to lower my hand. There you go. Um, I just, I, this question, I, I'm not sure if Mr. O'Donnell is there or maybe uh, Treasurer Lockman or uh, Mayor Collins can, can answer this question, but I just related to uh, what this additional attorney would do if, if approved. Um, uh, is, are there specific projects or specific areas of expertise, Mike, that you're looking for, or would this just be another attorney much like uh, Alessandra and yourself, just, just general workload? I, I guess I'm just I'm just wondering I'm just I would like some clarification, please, Mr. O'Donnell. Mr. Chairman, as I explained at our work session a week or so ago, uh, when asked a series of questions by members of council about how my office would carry out certain duties, which included nuisance enforcement, uh, right of way franchise agreement enforcement, and updating uh, code enforcement, none of those activities are capable of being carried out at the current time because of our severe understaffing. Okay. Uh, so we would 
address all of those issues, but I would probably redistribute the load within the office. Thank you, and I wasn't there, uh, Mr. O'Donnell, just to clarify, I wasn't there for a good part of that discussion, unfortunately, so I thank you for allowing me to, uh, to ask that question, but I, I do realize you had already explained it. Thank you, Mr. Cook. Dr. Aldridge. Thank you, President White. Um, I just wanted to uh, speak in favor of this um, amendment. I really believe that we have identified over the last four or five months together uh, several things through goal setting and through our um, council work that we keep um, relaying back to the city attorney's office, whether it be neglect, whether it be collections of uh, significant amounts. And I just think that um, at some point we can't continue to add to the workload without providing the resource. Um, and I think it's imperative that we be able to um, lighten some of that load to eliminate burnout, as well as to get the work of the city done. Um, and the things that we're hearing from our constituents that are important to them, such as taking care of the, um, you know, abandoned vehicles, the uh, neglect issues, all of the things that the city attorney's office gets pulled into. So I would speak in favor of this amendment. Thank you, Dr. Aldridge. Other comments or questions from members of the governing body? Dr. Rini. The $122,000 that's coming out of miscellaneous is that the miscellaneous division is on page 154. Currently we have $341,000 in there, or at least in a miscellaneous line item. So is that the source of funds for this? Uh, Mr. President, through you to Dr. Rainey. So on page 155, if you, um, halfway down the page, it says warm insurance payments. And you can see that $1.144 million was budgeted. I will be subtracting $196,200 from that. All right, thank you. Thank you. Other comments from the governing body? Comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of this amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. We are back on the main motion. Amendment passes. Mr. President. Mr. Seagrave. The second amendment I'm offering comes from the same funding source. Um, Recently, Councilman Laybourne, um, Director Jason Sanchez, myself, uh, and then later the mayor uh, all walked the uh, Depot Plaza. It is currently roughly 20, 19 to 20 years old. It is in serious needs of repair. Uh, we have concrete repair work to be done. We have concrete staining to be done. We have painting of trellises. Uh, repair of the uh, operations building, um, some landscaping. The uh, globes on the lights are damaged by hail and um, sunlight for the last 20 years. Um, so at this point, uh, Director Sanchez has given me a list of expenses. It's not totally complete yet, but it's close. So I am offering uh, an amendment um, and the exact language is an increase of $76,980 in the Community Recreation and Events Account, Clean and Safe Division, and reduction of the same amount from the Miscellaneous Division. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Mr. President. Mr. Seagrave, I think we have to do comment. public comment sorry. first. I, I yes. apologize. Public comment on the, this amendment. Public comment? Hearing none. Do I, uh, comments from the governing body? Mr. President. Mr. Seagrave. Um, maintenance of our facilities has, has long been a, a difficult issue. Um, I know even in this limited budget cycle, it's a, a very difficult issue. However, 
This is the premier gathering spot in our community. Many of our public events take place here. Uh, everything from Frontier Days to Fridays on the Plaza to Christmas uh, events uh, literally throughout the year. Um, when we have visitors here, uh, it is one of the main places that they actually get to see. Um, so in our priority list, I know it's very difficult, uh, but it is a limited amount of money, and I think we can get most of the work done before Frontier Days if we appropriate this money. And uh, I speak in favor of it, obviously. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Seagrave. Other comments or questions from the governing body? Mr. President. Dr. Rennie. Can I have the amount again? The amount is $76,980. Mr. Mr. President, I'm sorry to interrupt you, um, sure. but we need Go to ahead. clarify the dollar amount. It needs to be $73,000. Uh. Sorry, it, if the 196200 That was putting okay. us over. <laughs> okay. So the, no. so the amount is actually? Uh, $73,000. $73,000 even? Yes. Okay. And Mr. President? Dr. Rennie. Then will that take care of the, will that use up all of the warm savings? Uh, Mr. President, through you, yes. Okay. And to the councilman from Ward 2, what you said you had a preliminary list from, from Mr. Sanchez, um, did he attach a dollar amount to that, or are we waiting on that figure? Mr. President, through you. Mr. Seagrave. Um, I'll give you a, the breakdown that I have so far. Uh, some of these bids are old. That's why we're waiting for the newest bids to come in. Um, the painting of the light poles, pergola, archways, parking poles, etc. Uh, the lowest quote, and it again, it needs to be updated, is $38,450. He says, I am waiting to hear back from one other contractor. The cost to replace 117 globes, light cover globes, uh, material only, is $6,233.76. Uh, let's see. The lowest, the, <laughs> the staining uh, estimates range from 19000 to 60000 yeah. And there's a difference in whether they tape off all of the individual seams or if they just, as it originally was done, or if they basically just tape off the outside edges and, and roll it. And that's, I believe, what we're trying to do here. Uh, but again, these estimates are... Uh, I'm looking at Mr. Sanchez, probably six months to 12 months old. Um, so we're trying to get the updates. So there is a, there is about $10,000 extra that was left from the uh, insurance fund that I'm using as a uh, buffer, if you will, for the new bids to come in. Mr. President. Dr. Rainey. Is it anticipated then that on replacing the light bulbs we were given a cost for materials, is it anticipated that city crews will do that replacement? I see Mr. Sanchez getting up. Mr. Sanchez? Uh, Jason Sanchez, Community Rec and Events. Uh, Mr. President, through you, that is correct. We would do that work with uh, Clean and Safe staff. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Dr. Rennie. Um, I'd like some clarification, Dr. Rennie. I'd like to ask a couple questions. Do I need to you relinquish? You can ask questions, you just can't come in either. Okay, so uh, to you, Mr. Seagrave, I uh, have a couple of questions, I guess. Number one, we're 65 days away from the start of Cheyenne Frontier Days. Um, I don't know if you can answer this or Jason might be the best one. Is, is it feasible uh, to get these new bids in and then get contract and then get the work actually completed before that time? Mr. Chair, Jason Sanchez, Community Rec and Events, uh, that is part of the, the um, ask in the updated quotes. We're asking that the work be completed by July 16th. Uh, the painting contractor has confirmed that they could have that accomplished if we give the green light. 
the bulbs, the globes uh, could be um, 30 to 60 days uh, out on delivery. Um, so we still have the current globes out there, but they're really oxidized and some are broke. We could replace those at any, any point, but the painting could be accomplished prior to Frontier Days. Okay, and then I guess, you know, the budget won't be officially passed until towards the end of June. So how does that, that work? Mr. Chair, um, if the budget, if, if it's agreed upon, and we know that the funding would be available, we could let the contractor know that it would be available and they could possibly start. If, um, if it had to wait until July, um, that may change the opportunity to get it accomplished before Frontier Days. Dr. Ring, you had a follow-up? Yeah, I have a couple follow-ups, Mr. President. If Assuming this win, wins approval at this point, my assumption is that the department probably has some funds and then we could backfill those funds with this. Um, second question is if we're, how, what's the time frame on the painting? Is that gonna affect Fridays on the plaza or can no, that be no. done in a week's time? Mr. Chair, through you, we would quarantine off certain areas where they would be working um, during the week painting, but I ask that the work be completed uh, Monday through Thursday so that we didn't interfere with Fridays or events on, the paint, on the weekends. the paint will dry in 24 hours? The contractor told me that they'd be able to accomplish that. Okay. We can see tiny little footprints. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Seagrave, I, I have one more question. Um, yes, and while I'm not opposed to this, I just wonder um, of the concerns since we, as a council, already approved a six penny item uh, for, uh, well, it was for downtown, and specifically uh, one of the items in that, I, in that six penny uh, amount was for operation and maintenance of the depot plaza. Yes, so i um, not sure how the, these two work together. Mr. President, through you. What we're uh, working on today is, is the beginning of the repairs. There are other longer term items that need to be done as well. It would also, if the six penny is passed, it would also cover operation of the spray park. Uh, any maintenance or repairs that have to be done to that, it seems to be an ongoing issue. Um, there are additional concre concrete uh, items, steps that are not included in this, unfortunately. So. Um, and we're looking at the next four to five years worth of uh, maintenance and operation of the plaza. So, and again, that was just one part of that six penny um, proposal. Okay, thank you. I know that uh, Dr. Aldridge has a question or a comment. Mr. President, Dr. Aldridge uh, removed her raised hand function. Oh, okay, thank you. Other comments or questions from the governing body? Yes, sir. Mr. Johnson. I think we're headed in the wrong direction with this, um, strictly on the fact that with $73,000, knowing that we had O&M budgets, that we were paying people out um, from, example, like the Botanical Gardens, for example, you know, where we were taking out of their O&M budgets that decreased it from you know, an 11 year span to a six year span that with $73,000, we could actually get some employees back into the general fund instead of having them coming out of their own M budgets. So I just think that this is kind of in the wrong direction. And um, looking back on what we've done over the last five months, um, when it came to downtown street and curb, we did an ordinance change. It was discussed in the language that um, when it came to street, repair that we had that money left over from the previous six penny ballot that we could um, actually uh, fix curbs. So that's kind of an offset for me, just knowing that there's funding out there for that. We you know, found funding surprisingly, which was another concern of mine with the six penny ballot that's going forward that all of a sudden we found funding from the last, or the 2012 six penny ballot for the 17th street lighting um, I mean, this just seems like we're going in a really wrong direction. I'd rather kind of take care of some employees in their O and M budgets with seventy-three grand than than um, paint some sidewalks. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Other comments or questions from the governing body, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Laybourne. 
Well, I think we have to remember <clears throat> that there has not been the kind of maintenance on the plaza that would keep it in the attractive uh, nature that it deserves. <clears throat> and certainly all the work we put in on this splash pad uh, means we're gonna be having more visitors downtown and that they're gonna be uh, need to find that to be the attractive area that it is. As far as the <clears throat> overall picture here, I think it is uh, important to note that downtown is the heart of our city and the plaza is the heart of downtown. It is something that our guests from around the world and around the region are gonna be here uh, very shortly to enjoy and I think we really need to kind of spruce up and put on our best clothes. So as far as the six penny ballot goes and all the revenue indicated there, um, there are a lot of issues downtown that need to be dealt with. The sidewalk and curb and gutter ordinance change is the mere beginning of the proper and long lasting infrastructure improvements that we have to do if we want our downtown to be the kind of downtown that I think people expect and that will attract investment and opportunity. So I, I, I just uh, really wanna emphasize that unfortunately over the years we didn't really do the upkeep on the plaza that we should have. So our opportunity to do that here, uh, I think, is an uh, indication of our commitment to uh, that area and to our downtown. So I'm very much in favor of this, and I don't think it detracts from anything else. It adds, and uh, that's something that I certainly look forward to that Sixth Penny campaign, and I wanna talk about uh, where that money is gonna go and what it's gonna do in that district because we need it just as we need uh, this funding right now. So I hope we will uh, take a look at it in light of its importance. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Laybourne. Um, I think Dr. Aldridge has her hand up again. Dr. Aldridge. Thank you, um, President White. I um, I agree with my colleagues that the downtown is the heart of our community. Um, I do also share uh, my colleague, um, Councilman Johnson's concerns that, um, you know, we need to, there are other things that we definitely need to be spending money on as well, uh, including, you know, our most important asset, quite honestly, which is our uh, staff and our, uh, our employees. But I don't think that this is a case of having to pit one against the other. I think that, um, we are working on um, plans moving forward to be able to um, meet both of these goals. And I, I would um, hope that we might be able to maintain the depot and the plaza um, rather than letting the neglect become further and further um, remiss and adding to a future cost. So um, I'll be supporting this amendment by Councilman Seagrave. Thank you, Dr. Aldridge. Mr. Escobel. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, listening to that conversation, one of the things that crossed my mind is that while I'm down there waiting for trains, we'll a lot of times hang out in the plaza and uh, I've overheard comments from visitors uh, to our fair city and uh, most recently during Christmas about the way the tree was decorated. And when you represent the city and you hear disparaging comments about it, uh, that makes you wanna step up and, and try and do something more. And I'm glad to see that we're actually gonna do something more with that plaza. So I'll support the amendment too. Thank you, Mr. Escobel. Other comments, questions from the governing body? Mr. President. Dr. Rinney. This is difficult because I agree with the councilman from Ward 1 in that that the plaza, I mean, I've been a big advocate for, for, of downtown and for downtown. 
um, for all the years I've been on council, and I believe that downtown is probably one of the, is the most important area of our city as far as um, attracting visitors and, and how we present ourselves. And I also agree that the plaza is one of the, you know, has kind of become the heart of downtown. My wife and I enjoy going down there on Friday nights and spending time down there. Um, however, as important as that is, we did have a plan, or do uh, the advocates of this have had a plan when they included that in the six penny? And I, my understanding was that that's how we would how how we would fix up the plaza and maintain it. Um, I guess I'm persuaded by Councilman Johnson's point, and I this is bothers me also. Um, and I suppose it bothers me because I'm the council's representative to the Friends of Botanic Gardens, but when we sold the, when we built the gardens, and that is a jewel of our community also, it may not be the centerpiece, but it's certainly a jewel. Um, we told the public that we were gonna set up a $2 million O&M fund so that it could be maintained. Because of, the, because of the way the budget hit us last year, we moved two employees into that O&M fund and they are still there. And that's going to eat that up. And at some point, we're going to have to pay the piper if we don't get them out of there. This money, um, as much as I love the plaza in downtown, this money, I think, really ought to go, um, to quote a friend of mine, to go towards people over paint. So I cannot support the amendment. Thank you, Dr. Rennie. Other comments or questions from the governing body? Yes, sir. Mr. Johnson. I guess I could. For anybody that actually disagrees with me, if I could use your same argument against you. Uh, here we talk about um, dilapidation and upkeep of the plaza and how it's neglect. And then I give you a point, a perfect example of a six penny project with the conservatory and the botanical gardens um, that, you know, I don't want to be the person that comes back when these people are no longer there to uh, upkeep the um, conservatory and the botanical gardens. And I'm having the same discussion that I, all of a sudden I need to. Um, approve another six penny budget because I uh, misused funds um, to basically take care of some curbs, which I believe there's already funding for. I think the way that we've found out over the last five months that there's other funding mechanisms, I think that, um, you know, uh, I'd rather, you know, kind of take care of uh, what we have as well, meaning the conservatory. I'd like to keep it nice and not have uh, people come back to me in 10, 20 years and tell me that, um, look what you did misusing funds and um, causing this building to go into disarray. Mr. President. Mr. Seagrave. I'm, I'm, I understand the argument, but I'm lost on the funding. This is a savings of insurance premiums. It was never designated for the uh, botanic gardens or any other um, function in the city. Um, again, due to staff's hard work there's a savings in the in the upcoming uh, we're not taking money away from the botanic gardens uh, we're, we're talking about a savings of insurance premiums thank you mr. president dr. Rini I agree with my colleague from Ward 2 we are talking about a savings in insurance premiums but then the question becomes where do you invest that savings um, my preference would be rather than we have a mechanism to deal with the plaza um, through the six penny, and we've all agreed on that, and we've all voted to support that. We had a mechanism to take care of the maintenance for, for the botanic gardens, and we've, which, as I said, we told the voters we would build a two million O and M fund. We are now using um, some of that O and M fund to pay salaries for regular employees. To me, it's we have some money that's discretionary. And at my discretion, my preference would be to get those employees where we can use some of that money, the $73,000, and get those employees out of O&M for the gardens rather than use it on the plaza. And it simply comes down to what our priorities are. Mr. President. Mr. Rabel, we haven't heard from you yet. Uh, Treasurer Lockman, this uh, 196000 from the savings from the warm insurance payment, is that going to be reoccurring every year, or is this a one-time deal? Uh, Mr. President, through you, through Councilman Roybal, it is, um, it, it's not really savings per se. We budgeted 40% cut originally because that's what Warm told us a couple months ago, and the cut came in less because of um, things that Mr. Um, Eric Boughton 
yeah. did with them, um, like changing coverages and some things like that. So, I mean, I don't know, you know, each year is different. I don't know what the increases will be in the future, okay. um, but this is a start, and so. Right. Essentially, yeah. it's just, if I could ask a clarifying question, sure. Robin, it's just, we have these savings because we projected a more severe cut than what actually occurred. Yes, that's correct. Right. And so next year, up to you, Mr. Chair. Mr. So Ray. next year, if we project a 19%, those funds won't be there, right? Um, Instead of 40%, we, we go down to, let's say, real at 19%? Uh, Mr. President, through you, that would be new cuts. That I mean, new mm -hmm. expenses, okay. not dealing with this year's. And I guess my, my point here is that, you know, I, as a councilman, I've resisted funding uh, reoccurring expenses with uh, one-time monies. And so I, I would hate to see us, and don't, don't get me wrong, I, employees are probably our greatest asset, but I'd hate to see it, us do it this year and then next year have to cut it out. Mr. President. I know there's uh, more comments. Um, Dr. Aldridge had her hand uh, raised. Go ahead, Dr. Aldridge. Uh, President White, this is Dr. Aldrich. I was just going to bring the same point forward that my colleague Roybal, uh, Councilman Roybal did, that um, my concern is always about recurring costs with one-time money. So um, I do agree that we do need to look at how we're going to make up the shortfalls in that O&M budget um, for the Botanic Gardens. It is a, a jewel of our community as well and attracts a lot of guests and tourists and visitors um, to our community. Um, and maybe that's one of our new goals for the next goal setting session or review that we have is to figure out how we can um, fulfill that obligation as well. Thank you. Co other Mr. comments? Seagrave and then Mr. Seagrave. Yes, Mr. President, through you to uh, Treasurer Lockman or perhaps uh, staff, um, are the two employees that are currently being paid out of the uh, Botanic Garden um, Funds, are they scheduled to be paid that way next year as well? Uh, Mr. President, through you, it's actually three employees, not two. Um, and yeah, I mean, they're in for this year's budget, but next year's budget's a new budget. So, I mean, if we can figure out a way to pay for them, it's ideal. To so, I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understood. So, it's three employees, not Correct. two. Three Correct. employees. Currently being paid out of the. Currently, that. And, that that's, the, and that's the plan for the next cycle. Um, for the for fiscal year 2022 through you, Mr. President, is that what you yes. for sure? Yes, it's in the budget to be paid out of the, the O and M fund. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a clarification on that, <coughs> Mr. Roybal. Is, is it just three employees we we're paying like that? Are there more employees throughout the city that we are they're working off of O and M funds or other that? Um, yes, Mr. President, through you, there's other employees and other funds that are still being paid. The only employee we moved was for youth alternatives, I believe, back to their original um, okay. general fund. Board. If you wouldn't mind providing us with a list of those sure. employees in the next Absolutely. day or so. Yes. Thank you. Mr. President. Dr. Rennie. I agree. I've sat up here and argued for years that we don't use one-time monies for recurring funds, and we've pretty much worked under that policy. I would like to remind my colleagues that the fund, the o &M fund for the Botanic Gardens was voted on by the voters and it is one-time monies, okay? So to say that because we have a bigger chunk here, it's okay to spend it somewhere else, I, I have a hard time accepting that argument. The o &M funds are one-time monies given to us by the voters and we are de rapidly depleting that because we had to shift some employees over there. So if we can prop it up for even by paying for one employee this year with the 73,000, I think that's what we should do. Like I said, ultimately it comes down to where are our priorities. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Johnson. Okay, uh, Robin, is it on page 143? Mr. President, yes, that's the general fund for botanic okay, gardens. Okay, so this is for the botanic gardens division. So which um, positions are the ones that are currently being paid out of the O&M? It is. It is the volunteer coordinator, the head hort horticulturist, and the horticulturist. Okay. 
Do you have your calculator handy and you're faster with numbers than I? I got it. So for your volunteer coordinator, it's actually for the 2022 proposed budget, There's it's a blank. Correct, because this is a general fund. Said, so they oh, that's moved. general fund. Okay, yeah. so so if so, how many head horticulturalists do we have then? One. 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 Okay, so they have that one in the proposed budget. So, if I if I'm reading that correctly, so volunteer coordinator is not in the general fund, so they are blank. But the head horticulturist and the horticulturalist are in have numbers in here. So does that? That's kind of throwing me off. So what? Why so are they in there and not under the same? Parameters is the volunteer coordinator. Um, they're blank. Look, so why are they here and here? And that one's blank. So that one's O and M. Why do these two have numbers behind them if they're out of the general fund? Wh which two? A, I'm sorry. Uh, the head horticulturalist for thirty nine thousand six hundred, and the horticulturalist oh. for thirty eight thousand four hundred and twelve. So if I'm following your logic, those two, those two fields should be blank, like the volunteer coordinator. Is that correct? Uh, I think it would be wise to have Mr. Sanchez up here because I'm not 100% sure that some of the positions might have, somebody might have been promoted or something, I'm not sure. Okay, we will, we're on page Uh, Mr. Chair, Jason Sanchez. I'm Go ahead, sorry, Jason. I was trying to follow where no, you guys I, were heading I, there. I understand. <clears throat> it looks like the HOR operations supervisor is no longer in the general fund or the volunteer coordinator. And let me get to the 030 fund. I apologize, trying to find the right page. Mr. President. Dr. Well, Rini. While, while Mr. Sanchez is looking for that, could Treasurer Lockman tell us um, what page they are, if the, what page the O&M fund is, so we can have that ready also? Mr. Chair, I believe we're on page 215, and that'd be the special purpose option tax fund. And in the 030, what we we're paying for is the volunteer coordinator, the events coordinator, and the interior operations coordinator, as well as one horticulturalist. So it's on page 215, and um, there's actually, so four positions are being paid? Well, the events coordinator has always been paid out of there, okay. as well as the as well as one of the horticultural positions. Okay. So I'm just trying to flip between the two pages. No, I, I get it. So it looks like in the what was moved was the volunteer coordinator and the operations uh, supervisor. So the 49338 on page 215 mm -hmm. and the uh, 42662 for the volunteer coordinator. Mr. President, and it's also the horticulturist too. You'll see that there's, it's $40,560. We're not previously paid in 2020 and 2019. Mr. President. Dr. Rini. So Mr. San to Mr. Sanchez, we have two horticulturists. We have a head horticulturist and two horticulturists. That is correct. Okay, and one horticulturist salary is 38.4 paid out of the Botanic Gardens Division budget and the other horticulturist. That was part of our confusion. We were thinking we had only one. The other horticulturist is paid at 40.5 out of the O&M budget. That is correct, sir. Thank you. 
Dr. Aldridge. Yes, President uh, White, I just have a question uh, through you to, I'm guessing it might be Mr. O'Donnell actually. Um, I'm just curious, and I don't know, maybe there's someone else who has this knowledge. In the six penny uh, sales tax that was passed for the O&M when it was passed, um, was the did the wording, um, obviously the wording must have allowed for employees to be paid out of um, operations and maintenance. I'm guessing that they're vital to that process. Um, is there anything that um, precludes us from paying for employees from that fund? Or, I mean, obviously it's, you know, the preferred business practice would be to just use that for operations and maintenance um, cost rather than for personnel. But I just want to make sure that we're not doing something that we're going to regret later. And I personally don't look really good in orange. So I'm hopeful that we're not doing anything really remiss. Uh, Mr. President, I can tackle this one, I believe. Go ahead, um, Ms. Lockman. Yes, you can pay for employees out of the operations and maintenance account. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Other comments or questions from the governing body? Excuse me, hearing none, all those in favor of this amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Opposed? No. No. Rini, Mr. Johnson voting no. Mr. President. Mr. Seagrave. I have my third and final amendment um, rec opportunity. Um, <coughs> this is from a different fund. <laughs> um, there's an effort to increase um, the funds for the compliance division. Uh, to operate during the next year. Right now, there's $5,000 in the budget for that. And I think a, a number number of the governing body feel that that's inadequate uh, in order to do all the jobs that are required. We do have uh, some funds left over in the, um, I have to get the right name of the fund here. Um, nuisance abatement fund in the amount of 18,278. Now that's in the current budget, not, not in the future budget. So my, rec my request would be to increase the mayor's department compliance division budget for nuisance abatement in the amount of $18,278 and increase revenue from reserves in the same amount. Uh, Treasurer Lockman, I, I think I said that wrong. Is this the, the building um, abatement program that we're taking the funds from? Uh, Mr. President, through you to Councilman Seagrave, it's the abandoned buildings. Abandoned buildings. Some of the funds spent this year were for um, security on the hitching post. Uh, so that's that's the fund that this is left over in. So it's $18,278 in the current budget that would go into the compliance division for nuisance abatement. Second Aldridge. It's been moved and seconded. And I lost my um, language, but, but the amendment will be to increase the Mayor's Department Compliance Division budget for nuisance abatement in the amount of $18,278 and decrease increase. increase revenue from reserves in the same amount. Now that's, that's a little tricky and I'll ask. Is that uh, the treasurer to explain why it's an increase. Go ahead, Ms. Lockman. <laughs> uh, Mr. President, that is an increase because it is um, money from reserves. Um, so what happens if we're not spending the rest of this money, we have budgeted in the budget this year, at the end of the year, it essentially is dumped into reserves and then we pull it back out of reserves into fiscal year 2022. So it's a rollover account. You know how last year we had all those rollover accounts. Right. The same thing. Thank you for the clarification. Mr. President. It, it's been moved and seconded. Let's hold, let's hold one second. Oh, we need to go to public. We, we need to go to public comment. Yes, public comment on the amendment. Hearing none, comments or questions from the governing body? Dr. Rennie. Mr. President, just so I understand, this would normally be a reversion of 18,278. It goes into 
back into the general fund and then for next year we're just pulling it back out. So essentially it's a carryover only. We're moving it to a different line item. Because the way it sounded when my, my colleague read it, it sounded like we were actually doing $36,556. So, all right. I had, I had asked twice. <laughs> Reading glasses. So, yes. Mr. Chair. Mr. Roybal. So is this $18,278 in addition to what's budgeted already, the 5000 Yes. So we're at 20, 23278 Okay. Yes. Miss Dr. Rennie. Mr. President, so this goes into nuisance abatement. I do not see anywhere in there in abandoned buildings line items. So did we, did I, am I missing that or did we, are we just <laughs> abandoning that line item? Treasurer Lockman. Abandoning the abandoned building fund? <laughs> yeah. um, it's on page 157, Mr. President, for you. It um, is, it's when it, all of these accounts in here are rollover accounts, so you won't see a budget for 2021 in here because it's done during the reappropriation process in September. Page 157. All right, and that line item's been zeroed out then. Yes, that line item will be zeroed out and it'll be moved to the nuisance um, okay. part of um, complaints. Um, Dr. Rini? I have no reason not to support this. I think it's a good program. We had to do it. I just have one suggestion, if you'll allow me. And, Please. And that is, I've talked to, I've talked to Mayor Collins about this a little bit today. I've talked to... Um, to Mr. Fountain today, and I've talked about this since Bruce Wilson was the chief building official. Currently, when we secure an abandoned building, we go in and board it up with plywood. Um, there are other, com other communities in the country that instead of doing that, board it up with plexiglass. Now, plexiglass is more expensive than plywood, but it's not like you're advertising that this is an abandoned building when it's done with plexiglass. So I would hope that our department, when they do secure an abandoned building or home, that they would consider making that change. To me, you see somebody sees a building that's boarded up with plywood, it's like saying, hey, no one lives here, no one cares. Um, all I need is a screwdriver to take a few screws off and I have shelter. So um, I would hope we would germane to the discussion, but I would hope we would consider that in the future. Dr. Rennie, what if we use shrink wrap? I'm not <laughs> sure that's as secure as... Other, other comments or questions from the governing body? Yes, sir. Mr. Johnson. Okay, so I guess one of my concerns is when we did Capitol Avenue and we remediated that, and it was around $43,000, and the way that it was pitched is that that was not going to be recouped. It just needed done because the foundation was falling in on itself. So when we budget even, like last time, it looks like in the abandoned building fund, the 25505 And then I guess that if we're rolling that over into nuisance abatement, um, do these actually operate in the negative? I know we budget for this, but when we have these types of issues, do we come out? whole because I know that was one of the concerns I had with capital was that we weren't going to you know that basically the, even with liens and everything else that the city was just going to in five or ten years whatever the um, you know before we actually write it off is we're not going to be able to collect on it anymore that is this a you know just in this one specific line item is this actually a true story of how this budget works especially on this one specific line um, Mr. President through you so there is an offsetting a nuisance revenue line item. So um, if we are able to collect any money via a lien or however, um, that that's where the revenue goes into. So we're, we haven't been successful yet in collecting on any of the lien, the two liens that we have. Um, so does that answer your question, Mr. Johnson? Yeah, it actually does. And then um, President White, if I can continue. Go ahead, Mr. Johnson. So one thing about like, ever since 2015 when it came down to actually like um, abandoned buildings and nuisances, when we would get asked to put more money into those accounts and then we would, actually, we would ask how much was actually spent and found out that we were actually under and so we weren't expending all those dollars that we were allocating into that fund. So in regards to nuisance abatement now that we're at 23278 
I guess, um, what's it going to be used for? Um, Mr. Treasurer President, Lachlan. for you all. Mr. O'Donnell. Mr. Chairman, in the absence of Director Fountain. Oh, no, he's no, no Mr. Here. Fountain's here. Oh, well, he is there. Oh, I'll stand down. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Fountain. All right, good, Mr. Chairman, through you to uh, the council. I don't even, Mr. Johnson, who asked the question. Um, you're right, we don't expend all of those dollars ever. Um, we try our best to utilize our own building department staff to mediate some of those properties and take care of that. Mm -hmm. Where some of the confusion comes from is that as we begin to work through the process with the program, we identified a list of properties. We were able to either A, find suitable people to renovate those projects, um, fl house flippers, et cetera. Another opportunity that we've been able to work through is kind of getting the property owner themselves motivated to sell the property to somebody else. And so that eliminated a lot of them. The thing you have to think about, we have, we have twofold responsibility keep our community safe. So when we work on dangerous buildings, the ultimate outcome and goal is to keep the residents safe in that area. What we typically find is they are primarily residential units, and unfortunately, most of them that we've been battling are in close proximity to elementary schools or bus stops. So that's a, a n issue number one. The ROI really comes in from when we see the property have an improvement or we demo the property, property tax values within that area actually increase. And also residential values, when people go to sell their properties, they see those numbers increase as well. So it's not really going to be something where we see our dollars come back automatically. We do rely on the system. Um, one of the things the city attorney's office has been working on is trying to get some of those monies collected upon. But the state statutes, the way they're written, do not really give us that authority on some of those. And we also have some complications in lien placements. Um, whenever you place a lien on a property, if you are the second place or perhaps you know even third or fourth in that opportunity, we would have to purchase out the first mortgage, second mortgage, and anybody before us because we don't have what they call a priority lien process just because we're a municipality. So there's some complications there, and I think that's where some of that delay in recapturing those dollars. But if you're looking for a return, it's in public safety and then increased property values. Other questions? I, yes, so in that Mr. Johnson. aspect, it's just public perception. That's our win. I guess so with that kind of increase, though, for $18,000, because you're worried. So now that you're adding 18278 this obviously opens up a lot of possibilities to you that $5,000 wouldn't. So I guess now how does this enhance your plans for 2022 going forward if this actually passes that now you have you know, a little less than $20,000 more to work with? Mr. President, through you too, um, Councilman. I think what we're ultimately going to try to do is look at, and so the operation currently is operating with one nuisance officer. We have divided his responsibilities up over the, you know, I'll be sending you guys an email um, later today. We just compiled that data over the last couple of days. But we've seen an increase in every single ward in terms of a nuisance abatement. We used to see primarily Ward 1 as our primary user and our primary responsibility. And now that we are trying our best to myself taking responsibility, some of our other staff getting out there and looking at it, we're seeing an increase in nuisance responsibilities throughout the community. One of the biggest problems we have is the transient population. So we're cleaning a lot of that up, believe it or not, in Ward 2, which has never been an issue for us in the past. We track everything from people dumping dryers, washers, couches, so on, et cetera, throughout the community. We're finding those in Ward 2 and 3 as well. So we're having to abate those as we move forward. The big, big hurdle for us to get over is that anytime you have a community of 30,000 or more, you typically see a nuisance officer uh, provided for that number. There's also dollars associated with being able to do those abatements. Currently, the city of Cheyenne serves a oh, plus 60,000 people with one nuisance officer. We probably are poised to set ourselves with three nuisance officers, um, but we didn't request that in the budget. We didn't have that, and we knew that looking at the budget and the forecasting. So. Right now, it's really looking at how we can utilize the one individual, myself, and the rest of our team, and then trying to find those resources. One, again, is going out and looking at getting um, lawnmowers, weed eaters, et cetera, getting the grass cut ourselves. Our billable rate is 175 per hour, so if we can do some of those things ourselves, we can make that happen. This is just the first step, I think, of many um, outside of code revision and looking at who's responsible for what throughout our community in terms of nuisance conversation the actual dollars to do it, and then the staffing. 
Thank you, Mr. Fountain. Other comments or questions? Yeah, I guess Mr. Johnson. Just, I, I, every time I see $18,000, just kind of like I asked with the Arch Cheyenne question, you know, that's an awful lot of washers and dryers to pick up for 18,000 bucks. So, and it, so as far as like review a code, I thought that's what I was supposed to do with your assistance. So as far as like, you know, changing of codes, that's what we did unless it was internal. You know, I, it just doesn't, you know, I just, it's just odd to add $18,278 to an account that was resting at $5,000. I just, you know, I, I mean, what was the rule over this, you know, money from this account into this account? I mean, what conversations actually took place that said, hey, this is a really good idea to move it into nuisance abatement, and what are we going to do with it? I guess there's no context is what I'm getting at in regards to what you guys did when you made this amendment. Mr. Fountain, <laughs> Mr. take a crack at that? Sure, we'll go ahead and take a crack at it, Mr. President, uh, to Councilman Johnson. I think the conversation amongst the council members have been, we want to be more proactive rather than reactive. We want to get some of these things cleaned up. I think, to be honest with you, if we look at it, like you said, it's looking to you folks for that support. Had conversation with Dr. Overney today in terms of looking at how we can rewrite the codes or reevaluate the codes. Had a very interesting conversation with the city attorney. Very similar to what the state did, I think it was in 77, with state statutes. They went through and they looked at them and they said, this is the path that we need to go. We need to take the things that belong within the appropriate lines and put them there. What this council has had conversation about is how do you get those things taken care of? How do you get that taken care of? What does the workload look like? How do you fund those opportunities and getting that done? And we only have one person. So if we have to outsource this, which we have done in the past to this line item, mm -hmm. if you're looking for that kind of an increase, it's about $175 to $300 an hour for us to outsource that work. We have retention ponds that we took care of ourselves last year that we did not spend money on. And that is a, it's probably a $700 job on rodeo that we assume the responsibility for. We have other retention ponds that we took responsibility for that are not taken care of and nuisance takes care of them. We have properties that we kind of forewent the responsibility, if you will, and did not um, take care of it. And now we have to take care of it. So as you know, Councilman, I think the best way to describe it is they took the funding that's needed to do the job. Now we need the staffing to do the job. So if you want to delay that process, we can, but ultimately it still has to get done. And it's really hard when you look at the budget to say, I agree with you in terms of, you know, how are you going to expend those dollars? We'll do our very best to do that, but staffing is key. Yeah. Okay, I agree. And so I'm guessing for $18,278, that's going to be obviously a part-time person. That was one of the conversations, I'm sorry, Mr. President, to you, to Councilman Johnson. That was one of the conversations we had in our office this afternoon, was that if we looked at this, could we get a seasonal person to assist in some of this fashion to get things taken care of? But the bottom line is that's really just a Band-Aid and a temporary solution for a long-term problem. You know, there's conversation with annexation throughout the community. As we look at those situations, we know that as we annex through those bigger areas, those developments, those are absolutely going to be nuisance areas that are going to be pinpointed for us to take care of. And I think that uh, we do that, but that would be our solution. We did have that conversation today, sir. Okay, so my last follow-up is, I guess, so for $18,278, is there any kind of potential to actually use this as a stipend for internships to take care of like your your coding and other things that they can do you know they're obviously going to have to be still a city employee if they're going to be driving the vehicle and things like that so i get that there's those costs there but so are you guys going to take more you brought up seasonal but are you guys taking advantage of more internships with just a small stipend with this money is that a possibility Mr. President, through you to the councilman again, absolutely, we're, we're open to doing whatever. This is a very new division and taking compliance through the process. You have to realize it's a three-year-old uh, department. The first year, there was controversy in terms of how would we pull it together, what would they do. The second year, we went through a pandemic of operations and, and tried to operate, you know, basically in a silo from home and try to figure those things out and still service the community. And in year three, we're really looking at how do we do business and who our players are. So yes, we're absolutely open to any of those recommendations. I guess, um, uh, Mr. Johnson, it, on twelve thirty one of twenty twenty one, can you send me an update of how we've actually where we're at on the twenty three thousand two seventy eight 
So I know I can watch it through reappropriations, but can I, you kind of just give me a summary on, you know, half through the fiscal year, you know, of how effective we've been with this increase? Mr. President, to you to the councilman, absolutely. That is one of the things that we are um, currently looking at doing is providing you guys a quarterly update in terms of nuisance, uh, the risk department, the ADA um, building department. So overall, everything that's going on through compliance, we look to give you a quarterly advisement and uh, not a problem, sir. Dr. Aldridge. Uh, through you, um, President White, I wanted to respond to my colleague, um, Mr. Johnson, in the conversations I've been in around this in this last week, I think there's a recognition that $5,000 was just not enough if we really wanted to address um, the, some of the compliance issues we have. Understandably, $23,000 is probably not enough. Um, but I think that it's a start and I think that uh, we have to start somewhere. And um, I would like to uh, offer my assistance to um, Director Fountain as we look forward uh, to some work-based learning opportunities and internships and things we might be able to pull together through some resources that I have contacts with. But I think that this is a place to start. Thank you, Dr. Aldrich. Uh, Mr. Fountain, I have a question, quick question for you. Uh, what is the size of your staff? How many code enforcement officers do we have? Mr. President, to you, it is, um, I have one and myself. Thank you. And I believe in, in my discussions with the city of Casper, they have four. Is that correct? Do you, do you know that? I actually do, uh, Mr. President. To you, the city of Casper currently is operating with three officers and then three support staff internally to take care of the inside internal affairs. Right. And I, I'm going to be sending you guys that link again. I'll be sending you over an email. You'll have access to the City of Cheyenne, Laramie, and Fort Collins as well um, to take a look at very similar operations in business, but just a difference in staffing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Other comments or questions from the governing body? Mr. President. Mr. Laybourne. <clears throat> well, if anybody wants to know why we need this money, I hope you'll do the same thing that I did earlier today. Uh, with the chief of police and several of his staff members. And that is to go over to the bridge on Lincoln Way over Crow Creek. And I'd be glad to go with you. I'm very familiar with that problem. I've cleaned it up myself numerous times. And it is out of control. The smell, the trash, the incredible mess that is under that bridge is a harm to every business and individual anywhere near it. I would also point out that it is immediately adjacent to Martin Luther King Park. And I don't know who's gonna clean up this time. The last time it was cleaned up, it took two days and um, a multiple staff effort, it's, it's, please, I'd be glad to go over there with you. It's, re it's real easy, you park right there in the parking lot and walk over and take a look at our city and why we need this nuisance money. And that's one, one situation. Of course, I worked with uh, Mr. Fountain and, uh, and other agencies here in the city on 609 Pebrican, which was completely, f the front lot was completely filled with trash because their sewer and water had been turned off and uh, the squatters in there were um, doing things that are absolutely cannot even be mentioned in this room. So if you're talking about nuisance, we got them. And if you're talking about all the effort that's gone into the development of, of this office, this compliance office, we're definitely headed in the right direction and we're gathering information as we go. I would point out that the Fight the Blight initiative taught us a lot about the difficulty of abating and cleaning up and actually in some cases uh, tearing down abandoned buildings. It's expensive, it's time consuming, and I applaud the efforts of our city attorney's office to develop 
uh, <coughs> legal mechanisms where we can lien those properties. Without that, um, the problem that was mentioned earlier about Capitol Avenue, darn right. How do you, it, it's, a, it's a really difficult problem when you have a very limited budget and a lot of trouble, and the people that live in the neighborhood deserve better. They deserve response from us, and that is the entire point of this fund being adjusted. It isn't gonna go away, it isn't gonna solve the entire problem, but this adjustment makes sense so that we can do the kind of things that we know we have to. So I speak very much in favor of this, and I recognize that we're gonna be talking about this mm, this year, next year, this is a big problem. And I don't know why people do the things they do, but uh, hoarders and scoff laws and um, outlaws do things that they shouldn't. And we have to clean up and take care of it. And so this amount of money uh, does nothing more than a down payment on what we need to do and what Mr. Uh, <coughs> Fountain's office is created for. So um, I hope we think about this and I really strongly suggest uh, join me and I'll be glad to show you over there at that bridge uh, what our city uh, is experiencing there. And that's uh, probably the worst case I know of, but it's far from the only one. So whether we're gonna have to uh, find various ways to expend this money, I'm sure we can, we have in the past. And uh, it is nothing more than a down payment on a decent city to live in that takes care of uh, these sort of problems. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Laybourne. Mm -hmm. Are there other comments or questions from the governing body? Hearing none. All those in favor of this amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That amendment passes. We are back on. I believe. Mr. Yes, Mr. Escabel, I believe I was going to call for you. I believe you have one more amendment to offer tonight. Yes, I do. And through you, uh, there certainly are a lot of trickle down effects from what the state did. And uh, looking over the military budget. Uh, that's where the Veterans Commission is, and that's where this funding was uh, beginning of this fiscal year. Uh, the Cheyenne portion is $12,000 was a stipend, and I propose that we fund six or 50% of that, uh, 6000 and it would uh, come out of the gaming revenues and go into the community support. Uh, I guess one of the things that the commander didn't mention, some of the expenses are when they give a 21 gun salute, of course, the blanks, and the white gloves they wear, they go through quite a few of those when you're handling uh, black powder and white gloves, that's not a good match. Um, so are there any other questions about that budget? Um, we'll have to, you're making a motion. I'll ask for a second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from the public? Doesn't look like any. As there is no public comment, comments from the governing body. And just for clarification, Mr. Escabel is um, proposing his amendment for $6,000 um, to the uh, organization where uh, Mr. Uh, Barbic uh, spoke to us briefly earlier, and that money, that $6,000 would come out of skill, skills-based amusement gaming. Is that correct, Treasurer Lockman? That was an item two of the email that uh, she sent, uh, Treasurer Lockman sent to us on May 13th, and then I again forwarded that email to everybody yesterday. Go ahead. Yes, that is correct. Great. Mr. President. Mr. Seagrave. Through you to Treasurer Lockman. Um, I believe you indicated that these funds are not allocated at this point, so we're not 
taking this from a, um, I believe you indicated that these funds are not allocated at this point, so we're not taking this from a, uh, another program, if you will. Is that correct? Uh, Mr. President, through you, that is correct. This is something we just received for the first time a couple weeks ago, and I, I wasn't aware that we were going to get the funds, and so it is not included in the fiscal year 2022 budget. Thank you, Mr. Seagrave. Thank you, Treasurer Lockman. Any comments uh, from the governing body on this amendment? Hearing none. Oh, wait, Dr. Rennie. That's okay. I have a hard time with this one also because um, recently my family had to avail themselves of this service in a in another state, and it was very much appreciated. However, this is not a responsibility of the city. You know, the state happened, you know, the state happened to cut it from their budgets, and it is not our responsibility to pick it up. Um, last year, we cut the funding to several of the civic organizations that we normally support around town, and I'm not sure we've made them whole again yet this year. Um, but there are a lot of worthwhile organizations in town that could use a little bit of money here and there. And to me, this is just, um, again, to quote another friend of mine, this is the nose of the camel picking underneath the tent or sticking underneath the tent. I think this is a bad precedent. I think it's a bad direction to go. And as much as I think it's a worthwhile um, endeavor and it's difficult to argue against something like this, I don't think we should be doing it. Thank you, Dr. Rennie. Other comments or questions from the governing body? Yes, sir. Mr. Johnson. I guess um, resolution, when it actually had all the whereases and everything's doctored out, and then it would have, if a um, financial obligation was to be made by the city, then we could uh, discuss it at that time instead of putting it into the general budget. Uh, for something, for $6,000, I was gonna ask him for his information before he left, but I mean, really with this type of organization, I don't know why we couldn't, I couldn't do a public service announcement to fundraise for this. Yeah, I was gonna say that too. I think, I think Councilman Johnson could do a GoFundMe account that would get it done quicker than we would. <laughs> Very likely, uh, just just for clarification, um, the the funding amount that I, uh, that I'm aware of is, is is 12,000, so Mr. Escabel is proposing we kick in 6,000, and then uh, the American Legion would do fundraising activities on their own to raise the other 50% uh, of that. So um, that option might be there uh, for you, Mr. Johnson. Any other comments or uh, questions from the governing body? Mr. Seagrave. Um, is Mr. Johnson going to make a request that we postpone this in, in lieu of a resolution? No, I'll just vote no. Other comments or questions? Mr. President. Oh, wait, wait. Um, Mr. Escabel and then Dr. Aldridge. Go ahead, Mr. Escabel. Yeah, the, the only comment I would make is it was always a government funded program, just at a different level. And I kind of look at us as being the government. Thank you, Mr. Escobel. Dr. Aldridge. Thank you, President White. Um, I um, am a huge supporter of um, the ritual and the tradition that Mr. Harvick represents. Um, however, I also recognize that we have many nonprofits that we cannot support all of them. And I really agree with uh, Councilman Johnson that $6,000, um, I was just sitting here calculating whether I could pay that out of my own pocket because I think that it's a worthy thing, but I think that um, there's other ways to go about this funding. Um, and I think that um, this will be the beginning. And I think we've, you know, the previous councils before us have spent um, a lot of time uh, trying to 
um, help our nonprofit organizations that are not um, functions of our city government find other funding sources. And so um, I would be more than willing to uh, help Mr. Johnson in raising those funds and uh, seeking those from um, other means. Um, although this is really a worthwhile cause and as Dr. Benny noted, it's hard to vote against, but I think that there are other options that might be more prudent um, and not have the, um, not to set a precedent. Thank you, Dr. Aldridge. Other comments or questions from the governing body? Hearing none, all those in favor of this proposed amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Aye. No. Okay, so um, I think the opposed are Mr. Johnson, Dr. Rennie, Dr. Aldridge, and Mr. Seagrave. So I think Mr. Cook had to leave, so that's four, three opposed. Four, three opposed. That uh, uh, proposed amendment has been defeated. Uh, President White. Yes. This is Dr. Aldridge. Dr. Aldridge. Um, could we have, um, I don't know if Jennifer or uh, uh, Councilman Escabel has Mr. Harbick's contact information, but if um, that could be forwarded to us so that we might be able to be in contact with him about uh, helping them find the funds to continue their process. Yes, she does. And she uh, will forward that out to uh, council members. Thank you. Are there any other amendments to be offered tonight? Let's see. Hearing none, I'll call for a vote on the main motion as amended. All those in favor of the main motion as amended, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The main motion is passed. The recommendation from the Committee of the Whole will be to approve on second reading as amended at the next meeting of the governing body on May 24th, 2021. As there are no other items on our agenda tonight, this meeting is adjourned.